Aloha mai kako and welcome back to Energy Justice in Hawaii. I'm Ali Andrews um, of Shake Energy Collaborative and today we have two special guests. Um, one is uh, Richard Ha from Hawaii Island, um, energy expert uh, here uh, to chat with us about energy justice on Hawaii Island. Um, and also uh, Think Tech Hawaii's own Jay Fidel is here. Um, uh, to join the conversation. Um, I actually have, I'm just meeting Richard today for the first time a couple minutes ago. So I'm gonna ask him to give his own intro um, uh, to you all. So you guys have an idea of who we're talking to in the room. And then I think you know Jay, but uh, Richard, can you tell us a little bit about uh, your background, particularly in the energy field? Cause I know you have a, a breadth of experience. Um. Yeah, um, my uh, family is a Kamahili family from Lua Puna, and uh, I learned quite a bit of what I know, uh, what influenced me uh, in my life since I was 10 years old by stories that came down to, you know, just people talking. Uh, so, I, and I'm a farmer. Uh, I've been farming for 45 years. Uh, we produced about... Uh, Six million pounds of bananas and a million pounds of hydroponic tomatoes when we were in operation. And then several years ago, I was uh, the CEO of this big island grown uh, cannabis company. And then I retired from there to do the stuff I really like to do, which is what we're doing today. <laughs> Sustainable energy. Uh, that's what we all really like. Um, Jay, um, uh, would you like to add your two cents about uh, what we're going to talk about today, or do you want me to just dive in with questions for Richard? Well, I think the uh, first item on the agenda is is uh, what, what Richard's passion, one of Richard's passion. Richard is passionate about a lot of things, by the way. Um, but uh, right now, he is thinking about talking about and trying to advocate for geothermal. So we should ask him his latest projects and, and his thoughts and, you know, his, um, his hopes and dreams about geothermal. Amazing. I think we should definitely ask that, um, put that on the agenda. Um, the other thing that I would love to put on the agenda is I want to know about the uh, Hawaii Island Energy Cooperative. I know that Richard is involved uh, uh, in that group and uh, as a person who's uh, involved in a cooperative uh, initiative on the island of Molokai, I am very interested in kind of how uh, uh, the Hawaii Island Cooperative vision was incubated um, uh, and where the vision going forward is. But let's go into geothermal first, because I know uh, this is what you uh, are working on at the moment and passionate about. So tell us about what you're up to in the geothermal space. Well, you know, it started back in 2007. You know, that's when oil prices spiked to $147 a barrel. And, you know, as a farmer, we we're looking around, gee, uh, because of fertilizer costs and uh, plastic and all the byproducts of uh, uh, fossil fuel started rising. And we had no idea what was, what was going on. Once we found out, um, then I, I started to kind of uh, figure out who was talking about this. And there was this... Uh, Association for the Study of Peak Oil. Um, so I went to the first conference in uh, um, uh, in Texas, yeah. And and so the first thing I noticed is what they mentioned is the world had been finding, uh, had been using twice as much oil as it had been finding, and twenty years prior to that. So you know, just a common sense farmer, I could tell. Wait a minute, that ain't good news. I went to Houston for the first of uh, five peak oil conferences. So that was in 2007. And then they told us that we, the world had been using twice as much as we've been finding. So I paid really close attention to it. But you know, I, what I also realized that I was the only person in the room from Hawaii. And, and I was trying to figure out now what is my responsibility? Because I couldn't ignore it. I heard it, I've stuck with it, became a kuleana. I, I, I didn't want it, I didn't need it. But I was stuck with it. So I figured, okay, what do I, what is the best thing I can do? And the best thing I could do was just observe and try to figure out who was uh, credible and who was just blowing smoke. So the first year, you couldn't tell, right? 
by two, three years, I could get a good sense of what that is. And today, I have a real strong confidence that the people I can uh, refer to are solid. Yeah, so that, that's the evolution. And so today, you know, looking at energy, you, you know, we have geothermal. And what is amazing about geothermal is that the geologist tells us we're going to be over the hotspot for a million years. Actually, Don Thomas said million to two million years, but I, it makes me scared to say two. So I say one million. <laughs> but, but anyway, it's sustainable. He's right? trying to tell you, Ali, that he expects to live a million years, but he's not so sure about living two million years. I think we got <laughs> oh, it. Very conservative estimate. Love that. Yeah, very conservative. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so so we're going to be over the hot spot for that long. And what is amazing is, you know, the geothermal needs a uh, Oh, uh, you need the heat and you need the permeability and you need water to move the heat around. And we've got all three under, you know, all the islands in the, in the state. So, so we have it here and just, just think about it. This heat is free and it's gonna be free for a million years. And we're, we're about like 1% of the whole world has this uh, available, this, this resource available. Um, but it goes more than that. So, you know, if you think in terms of um, lightning, so there's a lightning bolt, and part of that is electricity, part of that is heat. And what you get out of it is uh, hydrogen, oxygen, and ammonia. Ammonia is fertilizer, so, so that's what gets the farmer's attention, fertilizer. So, so how do you do that with geothermal? Okay. It, the, the, the bottom line is the cost of the electricity. But you know, we go back to, hey, we're gonna be over the hotspot for a million years and the price is not gonna change. It's free. So basically what you do is you put a pipe down there and the steam comes up and it turns a turbine and generates electricity. You know, the techniques change and stuff like that gets more modern, but uh, basically that's what it is. So we're extremely lucky. So, so what we can do is uh, using the electricity, run that electricity to water, and what you get is uh, hydrogen and oxygen. Now, you can, you can take it one step further and make, uh, you know, take the hydrogen and, and go one step further because hydrogen burns hotter than electricity. Now, and, and that is key because, you know, just like lightning, it takes heat, yeah, to make the, uh, uh, to break the bonds of all these, uh, uh, whatever that is, electrons or whatever. <laughs> um, so, so we can do the same thing. It's a slower process. And some people will say, you know, it's not really efficient, uh, a geothermal. Uh, 100% of a 20% efficient operation is still free. You know, so at least that's how I think about it, yeah. Um, and everybody we talk to, you know, we just talk story like we are right now. It, it, that's, that's, um, we, can, we can do that. And we need to do that because the alternative is to go to um, like what they're doing in the heavy wash process. It's a huge, huge, you know, operation. It's way too big for Hawaii. We cannot do that. It's, mm. you know, and they do that because of scale. It makes the cost go down. But mm. our, 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 you know, just common sense, we, 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 we think that maybe what we should do is look into the other way, descale it, and then make a small operation, and then make the ammonia and use it for us here internally. And then that's the whole, yeah. the whole speech. That was a great speech. <laughs> well, yeah, but there's more to the story, though, Richard, uh, in the sense that um, my, my recollection is that um, uh, Pune Geothermal Venture (PGV) is uh, generating. I think it's it's online now. Is it online? Yes. Uh, it's capable of generating something you know around 40, 40 megawatts. Forty six. Um, yeah. At forty six now, but it could easily be be uh, be generating like a hundred uh, or more. I mean, you, you you talk about an inexhaustible supply. We could take a lot more. Uh, from Pune, but we haven't. 
um, why not? And uh, what are the challenges of developing this to its fullest potential? You know, they're allowed to go up to 60. Uh, other than that, they would have to go to another process. And then, you know, there's also the um, Hawaiian culture uh, sensitivity. And that is, you know, during, uh, down on the east rifts where the lava is live and, and, and you know, just recent eruptions. Uh, some people feel like uh, drilling into the breast of Pele is what you're doing. So what, what we suggest instead is not, we're not talking about that. You know, we're talking about exploring um, the flanks of the five volcanoes on this island, away from the East Rift. So what, what we'd be doing then is creating a, ri a risk. I was just down there this morning, like we did this, you know, myself and Nicole Lauzi were there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's amazing what the lava flow did. It raised the, the land up like 30, 40, 50 feet. What used to be on the top of a mound is now kind of almost level. So the next time this happens, it, it, there's going to be a big risk. And if people look back where the, when the recent eruptions were, it wasn't that long ago. You know, so there were several, 55, 60, this one, you know, it's frequent. Well, that, that takes me to another concern about geothermal. I would like you to, I would like to ask Ali to force you to answer. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is, I'm ready to enforce. What's the question? Okay. <laughs> you know, every now and then, you know, not the natural elements uh, prevail and we have an eruption. Uh, Hawaii has had eruptions, uh, you know, over and over again, uh, forever, but even now in our lifetimes. And, and although uh, we're better at predicting those eruptions, we will have them again. And so every time you have an eruption, especially in, in the zone where Puna Geothermal Venture and other, you know, potential uh, geothermal installations would be located. Um, we run the risk of losing that installation, um, of having the eruption essentially uh, knock it out or destroy it. Um, how do you factor that in to trying to get reliable, dispatchable, you know, inexhaustible supply of energy from geothermal? Yeah, so, so Geo, the Pune Geothermal is committed to, to get up to speed and get to 46 megawatts as soon as they can. And um, they're just waiting for the PUC last decision. And once they do that, you know, and, and they're, they're operating already. I mean, they're, they're, they're moving forward already. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And so um, the, the key is to locate at different parts of the island. First, you got to do the research to, to, to do the assessment, the surface exploration. And uh, once you do that, it'll, it'll lower the risk for, for companies that want to bid. Because other than that, you drill and miss them, that's going to cost you a million, several million every time you miss. So you really need to know. And there's, there's another reason why you should do that. It's because the geothermal resource is not going to change. You can move your solar and wind all over the place uh, within reason, of course. But you can't move the geothermal, so it's better to... Uh, do the surface exploration, understand where the best uh, possibilities, uh, chances of hitting uh, hot uh, 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 geothermal, and then, and then go from, from there and be ready. You know, in other words, be proactive. And that's what we think we should be doing is, is, is being proactive. Well, I think what I get out of that, you know, about the, the risk of uh, having further eruptions is, if you had a number, correct me, but I'm, this is my reaction. If you had a number of installations, say in various places uh, on the Big Island, for example, um, and uh, an eruption knocked out one of them, you'd have the others. And so that would be less likely to, to disrupt the whole system. Um, and so I think that may be one of the reasons that one would advocate for multiple installations because it makes it less likely that the entire source would be, um, you, you know, terminated on any given single eruption. Am I right? Yeah, exactly. It's exactly what happened uh, with this last eruption. It just stopped it, and we had to wait a long time until they got back online. Yeah, 
So, but if we spread the risk by, you know, uh, two, three, four different locations, that, that, would, that would help us a lot. Yeah. Well, well, um, let's go there. Uh, can, I'll, can you ask him how to get there? I mean, here we are, and we have this great vision because Richard always has great vision. Uh, how do we get from point A to point B where we're satisfied we're actually using this resource? I mean, completely, or at least in a greater in a greater effort. Yeah, yeah you know, I can make him answer that, but I think he's got the clue. Well, you know, um, when I went to these peacock conferences, the thing I realized was that. You know, and, and, and everything was from the Western point of view, and everything was all uh, fossil fuel driven. So we think and, and converse it in, in those uh, terms. What became very apparent to me is that the fossil fuel supply, world supply has probably peaked. So right now, nobody actually realizes it because we let people just borrow money and they can keep on going and stuff like that. But if it's peaked, and if you, you, you try to anticipate, what the downside of the curve looks like. We don't have that much time. So we, we got the people uh, that are in charge, you know, has got to understand that we do not have time. You know, and, and 10 years is, is, is going to be really spooky. Um, so, so that's why what we need to do is now uh, make some laws uh, so that we can uh, uh, make this process go smoother. And um, we need to get some funding because the, there, there's a really good uh, organization in UH Manoa. It's called the uh, Hawaii Groundwater and Geothermal Resource Center. And they do two things, water and geothermal. The two most important things <laughs> for us in Hawaii, and they're vastly underfunded. So, you know, we, we, we got to make sure that they get the funds they need to, because they're dying to get out there and get going. I, I was just with Nicole today. That's all we're talking about. They have their own drill rigs. But um, what we need to do is take a surface exploration, identify where the likely spots and, 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 and document it all and be prepared. So when Calco says we need more uh, uh, electricity, we have the information and people can go in and bid right now. Where we are today, we have nothing. You know, to, it, it's pretty uh, unbelievable that here we sit, and you know, like um, in the U.S. mainland, the uh, people who buy the land owns a resource under under the land. Here in Hawaii, the resource is owned by the state, and it, let's exclude uh, 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 Hawaii homes and lands for 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 a bit. But the state owns a resource, so take geothermal PGV for example. Because the state owns the resource, the PGV pays a royalty. And 50% of the royalty goes to DLNR, 30% of the royalty goes to Hawaii County, 20% of the royalties go to OHA, which is all good and fine, except none of the royalty is used for exploration. You know, that is critical. Some way we gotta figure out how to, how to take the, the resource money and do the exploration. Um, Nicole Lautzi estimates that it will probably cost about 22 million to, to evaluate all the five volcanoes on, on this island to, to put it on paper. You know, for, for a lot of people, this is kind of like chicken feed. You know, like for example, um, solar. Solar had, um, and I'm, I'm not picking on solar just, just to pick on solar, but they had uh, 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 673 million of, uh, what do you call that when, when you get money back? So for doing the project? Tax credit? Yeah, 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 mm. that, that, tax credit. And geothermal got, had none. So, you know, you ask yourself, what, why is that? You know, couldn't we figure out something so that we uh, uh, incentivize 
you know, to do this. But but nevertheless, we, we need to get out there and do the uh, get to get the money. So where's the money going to come from? Yeah. So there was a company from Korea. It's uh, called Soiva, and they want to come into Hawaii, and they what they want to do is uh, set up some kind of a. I, I'm not really clear on what they, what they are. Uh, uh, what how are they going to do this? But it's a. Uh, they want to set up a, a, a headquarters in Hawaii and 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 uh, use this resource, uh, this technique that they're using, which is all internet stuff, uh, banking, I think. Um, and and so what we they came and gave us a presentation, and it didn't go over well to them because we didn't recognize them how how high profile they were in Korea. Everybody in Korea knows that we we didn't know that. So they asked us to give another presentation, and so what I told them was, you know. To save you for some time, what what we you know if what we would want is twenty two million to do the uh, surface exploration and thirty three million to build a culture center above the cloud. And I told uh, you know I, and I was real serious here. Yeah? So and you know what they did? We we signed the paper letter of intent at the mayor's office. So I don't know if it'll turn out, and they'll be here uh, next week. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. A uh, second weekend in February, so we'll we'll kind of see what it is. But nevertheless, you know, we we we're not only looking at that. Um, if we get enough uh, uh, publicity and make the case, we can probably talk to you know how many Hawaiian people they got plenty of money like The Rock and and Jason Momoa and mm -hmm. and Bruno Mars and all of those folks, right? I, I would ask them, hey, come on. That's that's what we need to do, yeah. We, we, yeah. we need to do surface exploration. Um, Just a, a footnote to that is, uh, if our viewers don't know who Nicole Lautzi is, she's uh, part of uh, SOEST in, in uh, the university. She's a volcanologist, um, and she is um, has worked with and is the successor to a, a, a very famous volcanologist by the name of Don Thomas. Well, I'm sure uh, Richard knows on Thomas very well, uh, who worked on uh, these um, uh, these seismic issues and um, and um, you know geothermal for decades and decades. So that's the connection with uh, the university. The other the other thing which uh, I really think you have to ask him about this, and it was your idea, Ali. It um, was not. Uh, -E I've got a question too, but I'll put it in there. Oh, H I E C. Oh, are yeah. we switching to co ops now? Well, you want to get, you know, you have a few minutes left. You I might got a as well few minutes left. find out how that all plays in. Yeah. Right, right. Um, but I've got a question before then, because uh, something that, Richard, what you said earlier about like streamlining and making sure that we're ready for investment and ready for understanding the resource. Um, I'm not super familiar with geothermal. I'm learning a lot today, but I'm curious um, what you said before about you know, a change in the way that you are exploring where and how geothermal is developed? And how does that change the conversations that you are having with communities, particularly communities that are interested in the cultural impacts of this development? Like, how is that conversation changing? Are we in a better place for geothermal to be kind of ready to move through a community conversation? Or is, is, that, is that not part of where you're at at the moment? No, absolutely, we are a part of that because we know it. Just like you asked the question, you understand that it's tied together, right? Mm -hmm. So, so what I, I'm involved in uh, Halau Ohia, which is uh, Edith Kanakaoli's uh, class uh, about how Hawaiians were in in the ancient days, Hawaiian values. You know what is pretty amazing about that, and 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 because I'm in there and I'm Hawaiian, you know, it's a commitment. You, you know, it's it's a uh, so I have a certain amount of uh, understanding and knowledge. So now I'm able to bring what the Western side as, as well as the, the, the cultural side, because the cultural side is very, very, very important. We need to make sure we tie everything together and go forward together. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, great. I really want to hear more about that, but we only have a three, uh, three minutes left, I uh, was told. And I, I would love to also hear about the, the kind of cooperative model. And, and uh, I would love to know where 
Hawaii Island Energy Cooperative is now and how does that play into thinking about um, uh, developing renewable energy such as geothermal on Hawaii Island? Yeah, gee, myself and Mark Coyle are in the, in the co-op. <laughs> Mark Mingles and I are good friends yeah. of A's, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so what happened was, you know when uh, Nextera wanted to come in and buy HEI? Mm -hmm. So that's when we said, hey, wait a minute. Um, we better go figure out how, how to make a co-op. And so we called the, the folks from Kauai to give us a talk. And when they gave us a talk, we formed a co-op. And then we started, you know, touching bases with everybody and then we realized okay what will this likely cost where will we get the financing we went to the co-op financing and we got we got the money we got the commitment and what what our objective was was to be ready in case there was a willing seller there's no guarantee you're going to get a willing seller but one thing for sure we're ready you know so mm -hmm. the willing seller depends on the stock price you know so if it drops down below 30 hey we're in the ball game but I don't think it's going to drop down below 30. Mm. But that's, that's so, so it's in existence. And okay. they're just standing by. Yeah. So kind of waiting in the wings for the moment. And you guys are, you guys are going for the full turkey. The, we want to be the full utility owner from uh, bottom up rather than looking at individual projects uh, to be cooperatively owned. Is that right? Yeah. And we're focusing on the big island. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Justin, we only have maybe one minute left based on my math here, but I would love to know, uh, based on why you guys formed that, what do you think the benefit of um, the, the future of energy on Hawaii Island being cooperatively owned, maybe particularly even bringing geothermal back in, um, why would geothermal be better if it were cooperatively owned? Oh. Well, mainly because if it's cooperatively owned, all the money stays here. That's that's mm -hmm. the bottom line for co-ops, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're ready if we have to, but we're also not waiting. That's why we're doing all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow, great. Um, I, you answered that in less than a minute. Jay, do you have any other final thoughts you want to add? Yeah, I want to talk about the uh, <clears throat> just for a minute uh, that we have, Richard. Um, you know, how, how is the Big Island doing on renewables? Uh, you know, uh, th that it took a piece out of your pie uh, when geothermal stopped a few years ago. Um, but you have a lot of solar. I don't know, I don't know how wind is doing um, on the Big Island. I don't know how other sources of renewables are doing. But can you give us, um, you know, a handle on how much renewables you have uh, and whether my recollection is that Big Island is, is ahead of the game, that it has the resources to uh, approach the, you know, the target, the target of 2040 or 2045 uh, and achieve 100 percent renewables by that time, if not sooner. Um, how is it doing now? This is really important. Yeah, well, well, it's doing pretty well, you know. Um... Even, even with the Apuna Geothermal only having 25 megawatts online now, we, we're, I, I can't give you the numbers, but, but I, can, I can say this. Uh, we're, we're one of the highest in the state, yeah, uh, except for Kauai. Uh, and and, and they, haven't, they haven't come up to 46 megawatts, which is what they'll get uh, soon. Um, and if we start doing more, then, then we'll end up you know, being able to meet the, uh, the 2045 uh, goal, it, it really depends on uh, how fast we can do geothermal, new stuff. The future, <clears throat> the future lives on the big island. I know that's why you live there. That's why you're connected. That's why you make suggestions. Um, that's why you have the vision. That yeah, is I a great wrap up quote i know that uh we're here uh right at the end of our show um richard sorry i cut you off for a minute did you want to add oh, no. oh, just a couple seconds oh, no. no all right um well thank you both for joining me on energy justice in hawaii uh today um richard ha and jay fidel um here on the show uh join us again in two weeks to learn more about energy justice in hawaii thanks guys all right thank you thank